Hi, I'm Kelly Vaughn and welcome to Inside Indy. Um, and today we're, we're going to talk about a, a, an organization, a foundation uh, that is named after a, an Indianapolis gentleman. And I'm not sure if he's from Indy, but he sure is having an impact <laughs> on our city. Uh, we'll be talking about the Ken Thorpe Foundation, but here to fill us in on all the details is Judy Olds. Hi, Kelly. It's good to see you again. Again. And we've seen each other many, <laughs> many times over the years. She is currently the Director of Community Relations for Ken Thorpe Foundation. And Community Reach. And Community Reach. Welcome. Thank you. Uh, to reaching out to us here at TV. Yes. It's Forty. great. It's great to be here. <laughs> I tried to get Ken to come with me, but he was very busy today. So. I can't even imagine. He's probably the best kept secret in Indianapolis in terms of uh, people who are having an impact and, and impacting lives in our city. But before we talk about the Ken Thorpe Foundation, I want to talk about you a little bit. Oh, gosh. <laughs> because this isn't the uh, first organization that you have been behind to uh, help their mission go forward. Right. Now, I've been, I, I sometimes feel like I'm the non profit queen because I've been around for a long time. Uh -huh. A lot of people my age are retired and uh, wonder why I'm not, but I just can't do that. I, I love it and I've been in it and every time I think I'm going to get out of the nonprofit field, I get sucked right back in it and that's what happened with Ken. Um, so I'm excited. It's fun. Of course, you and I go way back to the Muscular we do. Dystrophy Family, Family Foundation. Foundation. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Okay. Because I left there in 2006. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So okay. it has okay. been a while. But uh, we used to do things together with 107.9 WTBI with Steve Cooper. Steve so that's, Cooper. That's how I know you. Because he was actually on your board, right? Um, he was an advisor. Advisor to the board. Right, okay. right. Okay. So he was a client and, you know, passed just in December. And we miss him yes. desperately. Yes, yes. We miss him so, desperately. So, yeah. So. Yeah. Many, many years with the... <laughs> With Steve, and so so we're so uh, so good to see you. Kind of like a, a little reunion for us. Yes. So, yeah. So with, with Ken Thorpe, now how how did you get involved with this foundation? Well, I went to work for a company that he's got some dollars in, mm -hmm. and um, realized as we got to talking that he had a couple of foundations that he was interested in having somebody work with him. They just been kind of laying stagnant. And I said, hmm, well, let me show you my recipe. And so I left the one company and went over to his, and um, they had been, definitely been sitting stagnant. The Ken Thorpe Foundation is a wonderful organization that gives scholarships to minority students. It's a $1,000 scholarship. Nice. It's unrestricted. And you know, when you're in school, that unrestricted money is so important because if you want to buy a pizza and all of your money is restricted, maybe you can't do that. But wow. with the Ken Thorpe Foundation, with the scholarships, okay. you know, you can do whatever you want with so it. There's apparently a reason why he did that that way. Yes, I think he's been in college. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely a college graduate. Ken's a veteran, uh, an entrepreneur, and as you said, most a lot of folks do know him or mm -hmm. know know his work. Yeah, and so the Ken Thorpe Foundation is um, was established several years ago, and Community Reach was established in 2014 as a 501c3, and it is used as a well, it was used to do some programs. It's a home, a house that's located at 3535 North Penn. And it's huge. I mean, you know those homes along that area. Yeah, oh yeah, and They're gorgeous. Beautiful way, mansions. Yeah. And um, so there were several programs that were being provided over there, and then funding got cut, mm -hmm. and um, and then COVID hit, uh -huh. and so uh, the programs were moved to another part of a, an organization, a for-profit that he's involved with, called Compass Residential Services. Uh, as I said, that's a for-profit, and that's um, residential services for individuals with developmental disabilities or intellectual disabilities. And um, he's had that organization now 11 years. They just celebrated their 11th anniversary a few weeks ago. Wow. So, like you said, he's got his hands in everything. Yeah. So, but... Um, I'm here to really talk about the, the Reach House okay. because okay. Ken is, is so fun. And, and when I started working for him, he said, I, I really want you to focus on 
getting the Reach House up and running. And mm -hmm. I said, that's great. And then I went and looked at it. And I didn't realize that he wanted me to completely have it renovated. <laughs> And it needs no. renovating. Okay, so this sounds like an addition of, of HDTV as well. So, so take us there. So when you, when you first went, what did you see? I saw a house that had just was in dire need of renovations. I mean, from start to finish. And But I kind of want to go back and talk about what, what Community Reach is. Okay. Uh, community Reach is, is going to be a respite house for individuals with developmental or intellectual disabilities. Mm -hmm. And the REACH stands for Respect, Empowerment, Acceptance, Compassion, and Hope. And these are individuals that... You know, sometimes even if you're you're married, you just need a break from your husband or if you, you need a break from your kids once mm. in a while because they get on your nerves. Well, if you have a family member that's got a developmental or intellectual disability, sometimes you really do need a break. Mm. And so the REACH House will be a respite for individuals. Um, they will be covered by the Medicaid waiver in Indiana, which allows individuals with developmental and intellectual disabilities to remain in their home and not be institutionalized. Mm. So we're trying to get the REACH House redone mm -hmm. and um, then we will offer it as a respite for up to two weeks at a time wow. with the individual and their case manager. So you talk about uh, those who have challenges. So say someone who has a family member who has Alzheimer's, is that what you mean? And then you're- No, no, that's, okay. not, al that's not it because an Alzheimer's person could wander Okay. And this is not a locked environment or a secure home. Um, it's just, it, it's a respite, kind of like a, a hotel, if you will. Okay. And uh, a lot of these folks still live in with their parents uh, or they live in de independently. Okay. And by having the REACH House, then we can offer this to other organizations in, in the state that uh, maybe don't have a facility like this. You know, Daymar Center is just getting ready to open a bunch of of individual homes that um, they're kind of grouped together. But mm -hmm. again, to, to have folks keep their independence wow. and maintain okay. that institutionalized setting is not the greatest. It's, it's okay. just not. And years ago, that's where all the folks like these went. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it wasn't a good situation. So um, as we've gotten kids more involved in, in um in the classroom learning regardless mm -hmm. of a disability and we're doing the same thing with the adults okay so but the house has to be renovated 100 percent did i mention that <laughs> and i mean we're talking from <laughs> architects <laughs> did i mention that <laughs> from uh, architect at uh, designed to drawing, I, I had to make notes here. Uh, Guess you the, got a lot going on there. Yeah, <laughs> the permits and then the actual construction. So we're locking, we're looking at a million and a half uh, wow. to get this done the way we really, really want it. I mean, currently this house is seven bedrooms. Uh, we want to increase that to ten. Wow. Uh, currently, it has uh, five bathrooms and two and a half, two half baths. We want to increase that. It only has one kitchen, but it's a, a phenomenal kitchen. Wow. And I want it to look like some of the things you see on the, the design shows mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when we're all finished with that. So it will be a communal kitchen. And then there's a huge basement that can be used for meetings, for I mean, there's one area in the basement that could be used for a Zumba class or something mm -hmm. like that. It's it's very large. I mean, the house is 5,703 square feet. Wow. And the lot's 19,058 square feet. Okay. So I had to have those written down or I would have I, forgotten it. I see it. Now, maybe you already have this on the burner, but I see a home show in this. Kind of what well, you I do would, on Meridian Street and yeah, open it up for... Pennsylvania. It's on Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. Kelly, it, it's rough, okay? I mean, um, another nonprofit organization had it for several years. And when they moved out and um, um, then Community Reach or, you know, Compass Residential had it for a few years. And then when they moved their programming away from the house because of funding... The house has been sitting empty for two years, and that's not good for any property, right. especially yeah. a house like this. And the fun thing is, if I can find my little Because I'm thinking if you, you know, you shot all these pictures, and then once it 
gone through renovation, open it to the oh, yeah. public it, for it, a tour. And you know how when you go to the, the decorator show house, yes. you see the before pictures. Of course, you can also have a tour to see it before because people love it. I mean, that's really hot right now. You can make a probably... Make million a, and a half? <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> to, to do a home show. And not to mention all the... Uh, the, the pub you would get for such a good cause because of course on you know decorated show house is great yeah. but people well, move back into their homes. What I just have I found out recently from the architect that I spoke with um, is that the property is located in the Short Ridge Meridian Apartments Historic District and is on the National Register of Historic Places. Wow. So I'm hoping that we can get some funding from there. Okay, very uh, good. But there's some real stipulations with that. Oh yeah, all uh, the as you can imagine. And so I have another note here someplace. Well, <laughs> now how can people, somebody watching now, who would want to perhaps be a part of this, donate? Maybe, well, and we're maybe even supplies. I don't. You know, we. I, I need twenty-five thousand to start. I mean, we to get the architect in so that we can at least get that. You know, the plans drawn up. Okay. And okay. then you know, I I could have like I don't know maybe. Ten donors uh, donate a hundred thousand each. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. You know, just okay. a small little, get it out of your pocket. Okay. I probably lost that card okay. somewhere. So we have um, the information on the screen. Then for people, would that be um, which phone number? The office then three one seven six zero two seven seven. Yes. Five yes. six to call that, that number, and yes. if somebody wants to contribute, that you just be. never know who's. I know. Watching. You really don't. And the mission and what it's going to do. Um, for individuals, it's, it's so valid and so needed. And we have a lot of minority uh, mm -hmm. individuals that we serve, and um, they really, really need mm -hmm. some assistance here. I mean, we've got some wonderful case managers in Indianapolis and through Medicaid and, and the waiver program and so forth. But I, I'm just really excited about doing this house okay. and getting it done. And Okay. Okay. Seeing what it's going to look well, like. Well, I know it's going to happen with you involved, but <laughs> we're out Thank of time. You. But we got the information on the screen, and we invite encourage people to um, to call. If anybody wants donate. to just write a check, we'd be happy to take that. Okay, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so. Judy Olds, Director of Community Relations for the Ken Thorpe Foundation and, and Community the, Reach and the Community Reach House. Thanks so much for joining <laughs> Thank us. Thank you, Kelly. On Inside Indy, and we'll be back with more here on Inside Indy after this. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Hey, Bobo, do trees tell each other stories? I'm sorry. I'm afraid I don't know that. Hey, why don't we go find out? Listen. And we're back here on Inside Indy. And as you know, uh, COVID-19, the pandemic, has taken uh, a toll on all of us. <laughs> uh, but there are certain groups of people we don't often think about uh, who right. have uh, their own set of struggles in the midst of the pandemic, especially um, mothers, parents uh, with newborns who face challenges. And we think, oh, that's, those things, we address those issues just like we normally do, not in the event of a pandemic. And here to talk about those challenges and some, some help for those who face those challenges is Dr. Camuel Wright. And you are the Vice President and Market Chief Medical Officer for CareSource, right? That is correct. Welcome to Inside Indy. Thank you. I'm very pleased to be here with you today. Now, when I got word about this and I saw CareSource, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I didn't, I didn't know, I had not heard of CareSource. Sure. So what is CareSource? So CareSource is a multi-state um, medical health plan. And we cover um, many lives, over 2 million lives, in Medicaid, Marketplace, and Medicare Advantage programs. 
One thing that I feel makes us unique is that we not only address the medical needs of our members, but we also turn our attention to those social needs as well. Many times it's the, the social issues um, that, that create challenges for us um, and can oftentimes compete with some of those other things um, that we consider to be priorities, such as taking care of oneself. So at CareSource, we look at individuals from 360 degrees. Okay, when you said social issues, for instance. So for instance, we're talking food insecurity, um, employment challenges, housing challenges, um, trouble with clothing, um, child care, all of those factors that are part of day-to-day -day life, but can really be a barrier for some individuals. And so what we wanna do is number one, address that as a very important aspect of people's lives, and then put together individuals and programs and incentives and anything that we might be able to do to help bust through those barriers. Okay, okay, that's comforting to know. Uh, I love it. I love it. So now, in, in this particular case, you're doing something special regarding moms of neonatal intensive care unit babies. That's correct. Okay. So what's going on there? Sure. So this was actually born out of a collaboration with some of our health providers. Um, and in talking to some pediatric uh, providers, they shared with us that one of the challenges that came to light during the pandemic mm -hmm. is the need for families to make frequent visits back to the doctor's office with uh, children, particularly those who had been recently released from the neonatal intensive care unit. It's obviously very important to keep a close eye on those infants. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that you really want to monitor is their growth. And so weight checks become very important to make sure that the baby is growing appropriately and thriving in its environment. And the way to do that is to measure its weight. Seems simple enough, <laughs> right, right? but if you think about it, we don't typically have scales in our homes that are appropriate to measure babies oh. and to have that accuracy that you really want when you're making medical decisions. Okay, and so these babies are born prematurely, typically? Most of them are. Okay. Not all of them, but the highest need is those babies who have been born premature. Okay. Or who maybe have another health condition that affects their growth, perhaps their digestion or their absorption of things. And they're typically underweight. And they're typically uh, underweight. Mm -hmm. um, and their pediatric provider really wants to keep a close eye on that to make sure that they are okay in their home environment. Um, they, they told us, the providers, that if we could um, find a way to give these families scales, um, that would really be helpful because the current situation is that the family has to come in once a week or so mm. for weight. And as you can imagine, that would be burdensome for anyone, but certainly during the pandemic. We actually collaborated with one of our medical equipment providers um, to provide this service that's typically not reimbursed through Medicaid. But again, we saw the very clear need for it, so we decided to offer it as an enhanced benefit to our members. Wow, very nice, very nice. So instead of that twice a week trip to back to the uh, the hospital, then they can do it at home. That's exactly right. So they can weigh the baby at home very easily and accurately and either call that information into their pediatrician or that scale can be used in conjunction with a telehealth visit where mm. you get some objective data and then have a conversation with your provider. Okay. So it can be used in a variety of fashions. The scale is theirs to keep, so it's not a rental. And so if they have future infants, um, they can also use that scale uh, to measure the growth of those babies okay. as well. And you know, maybe future babies aren't necessarily uh, underweight, but you do like to know how much your baby weighs and how much they're growing and kind of keeping an eye on that. You That's know? exactly right. And that might be a very sensitive indicator of something going wrong. Mm. So if families have that at their disposal, they may be able to better communicate with their provider. Okay. Now you partnered with Riley 
hospital in this? So the pediatricians at Riley were the first ones to speak to us about this need. Okay. Um, so we actually, they were the ones that planted the seed. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Um, and so we are very thankful for that. Um, but this benefit is available to any of our providers statewide. All it requires is a doctor's order and a very, very simple uh, form that is sent to the medical equipment provider. And okay. the medical equipment provider takes it from there. So they will mail the scale to the families and they will also help the family with any troubleshooting or technical issues mm -hmm. that may arise. Wow, so now, you know, when you talk about it, any provider, that's a lot of scales. It <laughs> is potentially a lot of scales. Now, obviously we want there to be a medical need for this. Right. So not every baby will require uh, this intensive monitoring of their mm -hmm, growth. Mm -hmm. But certainly, if a, a, if a pediatrician feels that that's necessary, then we want this to be available for them. Okay, so in weighing the baby, um and a being able to keep up with it, obviously, but what what is the ultimate benefit of that in terms of as, as the baby develops? So I, I think that there are a couple benefits. Um, the first is, of course, establishing the well-being of the baby. The mm -hmm. second is really making life easier for the families so that they don't have to come back and forth, shuffle other children and other responsibility. And I think that there's a huge psychological benefit in being able to provide this for families so that they can have peace of mind that their baby is thriving at home. Okay. So that's really the benefit. Um, we have right. engaged with the state um, in providing this benefit and, and they've been very supportive. So we are happy to be able to do this for our patients. Okay, well we love it and I'm sure the patients appreciate it. I so, certainly yeah. hope so and I the feedback has been very positive. Okay. So anything else that CareSource is doing or has done or is about to do that addresses uh, your social concerns or, or impacts patients? We have a variety of things that we're doing. Um, the, the benefit, our newest benefit is um, driver's license reinstatement. Oh. So there are a, a very large portion of our uh, Hoosier population that have their driver's license suspended. And oftentimes this is for failing to demonstrate insurance or other financial concerns. Mm -hmm. And we really want people to be back on the road if they're safe and able to find and maintain employment and mm -hmm. take care of the needs of their family. So for um, our members who are eligible, we will offset up to $500 of the fines and fees associated with driver's license reinstatement. Again, uh -huh. one of those social needs um, that we have recognized and wow. we want to address. Okay. The other really nice benefit I think we offer is expungement. So we have mm. a very active care source reentry program. We have a dedicated team of individuals that help people reintegrate into society. Wow. And a criminal background can be a huge barrier to obtaining employment, housing, certifications, licensures, et cetera. So again, for those members who are eligible, we will help offset the fees associated with expungement so that these individuals can have the very best opportunity to reintegrate into society and to do well. Wow, that is really amazing. <laughs> I've not heard of anything like that in terms of really getting you know, to the nitty gritty of, of what a, a, the, meeting the needs of patients beyond the physical needs. Well, that's one needs. of the reasons that I'm so proud to work with CareSource because I think that we really do have our finger on the pulse of those, those again, social determinants of health, those, those priorities can, that can oftentimes be a distraction, if you will, to taking the very best care of yourself. So we mm -hmm. meet our members where they are and we really try to help um, them achieve the very best lives that they wow. can. Wow, that's really impressive. It, 
I Thank got goosebumps. You. That's pretty cool. Thank so, you. Thank you so much. So whether it is a health care provider or a person who is a part who's under your plan, yes. um, how would they take advantage of that or some of your other programs? How, so they, they can contact? always contact member services. Um, and if they're a care source member, we will certainly direct them to the appropriate staff that can help talk to them about these programs. If they're not yet a care source member, mm -hmm. they can uh, talk to FSSA. Um, and submit a Medicaid application, and they can choose CareSource, and we'd be happy to mm -hmm. take care of them. I bet you would. I love yes. it. And you guys take good care. <laughs> we absolutely do our best. We do of our patients, best. So I love it. Okay. Well, we appreciate you coming on and enlightening us. I, and, folks, we encourage you to take advantage of, of what they're offering. Dr. Camuel Wright, who is CareSource Vice President and Market Chief Medical Officer, Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for the opportunity to talk this afternoon. Okay, appreciate you coming on and appreciating what uh, CareSource is doing for its patients. Excellent. And, and we appreciate you for watching Inside Indy. I'm Kelly Vaughn, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Want to make a difference in this crazy world we live in? Habitat for Missions has a way you can do just that. Habitat for Missions buys houses like yours and then uses volunteer tradesmen to renovate, update, and prepare it for sale. Once the property is sold, 90% of the profit will be donated to a Christian ministry here in the United States or somewhere in the world. Why should you sell your house to Habitat? Well, there are many benefits. HFM makes a cash offer for your house as is. What's that mean? There's no need to repair, paint, or clean your house. You don't have to put up with house showings or open houses. You don't have to pay any realtor's commission. And just remember, 90% of the house sale profit goes to Christian Ministries. I sold my house to Habitat for Missions. We sold our house to Habitat for Missions. Sell your house to Habitat for Missions and help us change our world. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. 